That's no, I'm, an, I'm, I'm joking. It's a, a little bit of a joke here. But that's I, mean, I, I started. <laughs> I, we, we got into the ministry when I was just turned 30. Really? We? Yeah. Okay. Well, he, uh, you, over 80. 82. Oh, 82. I'm wow. still going strong. How do you do it? Daily broadcasts. Well, you know, Monday through Friday anyway. You know, of course, God's given me the love of a wonderful woman. We've been married for almost 60 years, 58 years, and I've got four children, 14 grandchildren. But... Uh, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, I just, the Lord just gives me strength. Every day, your strength is renewed like an eagle. That's what he sees, promises. And I, I, he said, we're supposed to live 120, and I'm, I'm counting down to 100, so I've got eight, 18 more to go. <laughs> After that, to get to 120. But I just feel strong. Uh, before this broadcast, a little while ago, I was lifting weights, you know, pushing iron, and uh, I exercise, I ride horses, and uh, I just think well, our minds and hearts need to be full of exciting things, and if we do, we'll stay young. Mm. You won't believe this, but I play soccer. I'm 66. I play soccer Dream. three or four times a week. I live in Spain because that's where we broadcast from. We could talk about that in a minute. But, you know, one of the things that I believe that God has <coughs> helped me to keep uh, awake and alert mm -hmm. is through being fit. Yes. And playing football with uh, or soccer, as we say, in, over here in America, uh, it, it ha actually helps you to to focus and to stay fit. But you you've got to feed the body the right foods, and sometimes um, as Christians, perhaps we we don't well, take care of that body. I have just come out with, you know, I uh, I've got a son who loves to cook, and he cooks things that aren't necessarily the most healthy in the world. <laughs> but I, I have a taste for the, what the Italians call minestrone, uh, uh, minis, the, the, soup. The, the vegetable oh, soup. I love that. So I decided I was going to make some minestrone, and, and I didn't really follow any recipe. I told my wife, get me some of this, some of this, get me some cabbage, and get me some of this, and get me some celery, and get me some, and um, some chickpeas, etc. And I just dumped it on the big pot and turned it on and boiled it for about five hours. And out came this absolutely delicious soup. And everybody, we did it here, everybody just loves it, but it's so healthy. Mm. I, I think low glycemic food is the way to go. The, the, uh, the thing that is killing us is, uh, is this inflammation, you know, that's caused by eating too, much, too many sweets, too much uh, processed flour. Processed foods generally. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it kills us. You look at... You know, uh, I think uh, the United States has done the world a great disservice, you know, in introducing McDonald's and all these fried foods and things into the public life. Would you say <coughs> that it contributes to cancer? Oh, there's no question about it. Absolutely. I mean, you can, you can go down the list, cancer and diabetes and uh, high blood pressure and heart attacks, strokes, all these things. And, and Parkinson's disease and, and um, the onset of dementia, all of it is, is caused, I would say 80, 90 percent of it is caused by the type of food we're putting into our bodies or the chemicals we breathe in the air. Mm. Something that I think uh, is, is challenging to all Christian media groups, mm -hmm. and that is uh, the, the fact that one day, and I don't know how soon, but maybe you could help us here to see this, uh, that we will be shut down because of governments, uh, you know, we don't, we're not politically PC, you know, politically correct. And we say things, we speak from the Word of God. How do you deal with this? But for example, you, when you come across uh, the homosexual uh, mm. lifestyle, which is clearly spoken about in the Bible, and yet uh, it's becoming more and more acceptable in, in the world, uh, you know, how do we deal with that? How do we address that issue? in a loving way to talk to the people that are living this and thinking because the government's changed the law and made it acceptable mm -hmm. to them, but it's not acceptable to God. You know, Martin Luther said, you can be orthodox in all the things that you believe except in the one place where the devil's attacking. And if you fail there, you fail at all. And I think that's what we're looking at here. The one place the devil is attacking is Reproduction. Of course. Reproduction. The, the creation of life, which is the most fundamental chance that we have uh, as human beings is to create uh, life in the image of God. And we're be, it's being attacked in abortion and it's being attacked in homosexuality. Homosexuals don't, don't have babies. They, I mean, if, that's, if the two of them, I mean, two males, two females together, they're not going to create life. 
And so it's a sterile situation. And, and the abortion, uh, a lot of women, you know, I think some of the feminists, the strong feminists, uh, are jealous of, the, of their sisters who are having babies. And they have, a, they have attacked uh, reproduction. You know, the idea is that we've got to have more and more abortions. And we've slaughtered 50 million people in the United States, 50 million babies mm -hmm. in America. So uh, that's where, and so what do you do? Well, I don't major on these things because I love homosexuals. I really do, and I love people that have had abortions. I, love, I just have a love in my heart for people, and I, I don't get on a soapbox and condemn folks and, and that kind of thing. I think it's, it's, it's a mistake, but I, I just say, here's the love of God, and I think the Holy Spirit will lead people into truth. I hope so. Mm. Are, are there challenges for Christian media groups probably talking about, you know, Jesus Christ as being the only way? Mm. Um, and uh, when, you, when you see the rise of Islam, uh, particularly in the West, you know, do you see that as, uh, you know, as, a, as a, something that Christians ought to? Re how can they deal with that? Because they, it, the population they, explosion alone amongst the Islamic got to, got population. Got to hold fast on that one. You've got to, you've got to stand up and, and say Jesus is the, He is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. That's what the Bible says, and I believe it. And I, I think He will honor that confession of faith. Uh, we at CBN have what I believe is the largest uh, Arabic-themed Christian series of programs in the world. Uh, on our uh, website, we have as many as 50 million hits from people in, wow. into our Arab, uh, Arabic language. That's just, that's just on the Internet, and we have other programs. The Muslims are desperately hungry for love. There's no love and salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Muhammad himself could not tell you, I'm going to heaven. And you ask any Muslim, are you certain you're going to heaven? Not one of them can give you an answer. That's you right. know, I am, like the Apostle Paul, he said, I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed unto him against that day. I'm going to heaven, brother. You're going to heaven. You won't hear a Muslim say that. I will go to heaven if I die as a shaheed in a jihad against the infidel. Then I'll get 72 virgins and I'll be in paradise. But that's the only way to, to be sure. It's a big lie. What a horrible, horrible deception that is. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking for love, especially the women. You know, to go, are we going to be second-class citizens? Can we have roles in society? Can we, in society, can we drive cars? Can we own property? Can we be free? They want that, and they want love. Love. <laughs> There's no love in the Quran. It's always hate. Mm. We have a lot of Muslim viewers, so you'd be, you know, but they, they, are, they are watching, as well as a lot of atheists. You know, in fact, we have... Uh, uh, one particular atheist who just wrote to us recently and said, I'm starting to support you uh, because I enjoy watching the programs. And it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to be able to have viewers on Revelation TV that can relate to what we're talking about, even if they disagree. L-O-V-E, love. God mm. is love. God loves you, but he at the same time is a righteous judge. And, and we, we can't get and what they used to call sloppy agape, you know, uh, like this love that lets you do anything you want to do. God isn't that way. He's, he's a consuming fire. But he is loving. He's love. And I think the homosexuals need to know that God loves them. The atheists need to know God loves them. The Muslims need to know God loves them. I mean, you know, God loves them. But they need to come to his love through his son, Jesus Christ. Do you see we're closer to the fulfillment of this, uh, the prophecy about Arab and Jew coming together um, through the, Arab, the advent of the Arab Spring? You know? No. Uh, the time it'll come together, if you read Isaiah, uh, it has to do... Uh, with Assyria join Egypt, and the mm -hmm. two uh, will be, uh, or they'll be one with I Israel in the in the land, and uh, the, those three nations <clears throat> will come together. Uh, I, I see, uh, uh, if I'm reading Ezekiel the prophet, 38th chapter, mm -hmm. I see a, uh, a coalition uh, led by Persia, Iran, 
led by the, uh, the Sudan, led by Turkey, led by Russia, all joining together to come against Israel in the latter days. So I don't see any peace. Uh, and uh, I think this, um, this is an illusory peace, uh, this uh, Arab Spring. It, it's just made the way for the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood, as you've probably heard earlier in this program, they want to establish a caliphate uh, like they used to be, uh, where they, they, they dominated the Fertile Crescent. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't see any harmony right now, but I do see many, many, many millions of Muslims accepting Jesus. Millions. How, how do you see that happening? Is it through perhaps a revelation or uh, through well, the Lord you know, appearing to them? The Lord is appearing. We did a, we did a series of programs uh, dramatizing instances in Egypt. Uh, in Iraq, in Saudi Arabia, uh, in other countries in the Arab world where Jesus Christ is appearing to people. And uh, they, they, they want to find out about him, but it, it's, it's so moving what's happening. He, so he's doing it. Uh, Christian television uh, is doing it. Uh, and others who are spreading the gospel. It isn't easy operating in Muslim lands uh, on the field. I mean, you, you, the, the danger of being uh, assassinated is very strong. Mm -hmm. Now, we're in the closing couple of minutes, I think, here now. Right. Just the, the programs that you've been putting on this week, uh, and by the way, our viewers can watch you live, mm. uh, or not live, but pre-recorded. Um, mm -hmm. The 700 Club is going to follow this program in, on Revelation TV. Good. But the... The programs you're doing at the moment are all on, you know, sort of uh, near-death experiences or right. life after death. Mm -hmm. And just to give our viewers who haven't got a hope for the future, uh, just give them some, some indication of well, why we've got something special. Jesus Christ said, I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. But I am the resurrection. I am the life. And he that believes in me shall never die. And so we're showing examples of people who were physically dead and their spirits went to heaven or their spirits went to hell. So uh, we're having a tremendous response of people. People want to know what's going to happen next, what happens after this life. And the good news, my brother, and you know and you're telling it on Revelation TV, is that we live beyond the grave. The grave is not the end. The question is, where are we going to go at the end? And if we're with Jesus, we're going to be with him forever in paradise. That's Amen. the good news. That new heaven and new earth, which we're all looking forward to. Where we are. Dr. Pat, I just want to thank you very much. for. Well, thank you for what you're doing. And God bless you and prosper you and use you. Well, thank you. And, you know, we, we've got that special relationship uh, with yourselves. And uh, Revelation TV viewers really appreciate it. And we, too, as well. We're a small team, but we're, we're following you. And we're really, really happy that uh, to be invited here. Well, we're your... delighted you're here. And I hope <laughs> that we've shown you appropriate hospitality. And... You have indeed. So well, God bless you, sir. God bless you and too, long, my brother. May Thank your you. life be. Thank you very much indeed to all our viewers who really supported the 700 Club as well. We thank you for that. Continue to do so. God bless you and good night.